Okay, so now when we have the dust in, it's time to add the dirt. The dirt is almost like the dust, but we have less of it on the big surfaces like this. And instead of being uh, paler or brighter, it's a bit darker. So you can see we get a lot of dirt here and here and also on the edges here. We have learned how to do the dirt, so it's just for me to start with the basic here, which means using vertex paint. And that will take some time because it will be on everything for this lantern. And I will do like the free first and then you can just continue and then we continue when we have added the dirty vertex paint on all these small details. So I just select the first one here and then I go to the um, vertex paint and I go to paint and I set dirty vertex colors. And then if I click on the object data properties and go down a bit, you have vertex color here. And I will name this to dirty mask. And to be able to easily add that name later on, I press Ctrl C to copy it. And then I have it in. And to see the material here, I also need to put it into this. So I press Shift A, input and go down to vertex color. And here we have the dirty mask that I will select for the vertex color. And we can right now just drag it all the way to the material input. So we take away the rest here. So now the material is only these two. And then it's also easy for us to see that we have a lot of things left so now we have done the base here and we have to do the handles and all other stuff so what I do then is go to object mode and to be sure that I don't miss anything I just select the next one in this list here I go back to vertex paint go to paint dirty vertex colors and in my uh, object data properties I Double click and press Ctrl V to paste the mask name in. And then I have that one. Go back to object mode. Go to the next one. Uh, into vertex paint. Into paint. Into dirty vertex color. Into object data properties. Double click. Uh, Ctrl V to paste. Enter or return and then that part is finished as well. And I will do this for all the parts that we have on this lantern, so it will take some time. Uh, in the meantime, you can also do it on your side, and I will just pause uh, this um, tutorial until I'm finished, and then I will continue. So I pause now, and while I'm pausing, I will add all these vertex paints so you can do the same and then we see each other when this is finished. Okay, so now I added the dirty vertex paint on everything here, even the glass and all the metallic things as well. So everything has it and we can start by now changing things because now we have all the uh, dirt on it, but as usual, it's so evenly spread, since this is a model and not real world, so we need to uh, make it less uneven. So if we now look at the base here that I normally do, we have the vertex color here, and now we need to filter it out and make it more uneven, and that we can do with a map range. So we put in a map range here by pressing Shift A, a converter and a map range and when you change it from max here you can see that you get more contrast out of this so you can change that by using the yeah something like noise or something like that in here in the same way we did earlier so we can press shift a and input and texture corner to control the noise then we can have the noise, so shift A, texture and the noise texture. And we use the object and as you remember, we also need some multiply here to be able to control it in a better way. So shift A, converter, 
and a math node and here we add the multiply and we connect that one and we connect this one here so we have it and then we take up the detail a bit the roughness a bit and also uh, the scale a bit here and now we can control this and you can see now that we can get some uneven uh, spread here with the the noise that we are using so it's up to us now to put in if we want to have it really much like this or if we want to have it soft it could be that we would like to have something between so something like this and then we go out a bit like that so now we only have it in the center point where we have all the dirt collected here so and this is also clamped so now we have everything between zero and one out here and that we can use to create uh, our dirt and since the dirt is a bit darker but other than that it's yeah we also have some uh, changes on the bump here but we can use the same uh, shader we don't have to create a new shader for this so uh, we just the reconnect the material output to what we had before and then we can move this so we get some room here and that part up here will then be our dirt so that we can move here so we have room for everything so now we have some space to work with and uh, what we are going to do first of all is just to change the color here so we add another mix color so shift a color and a mix rgb that we put in here and now we have to think a bit because the white part is the part that should be a non uh, smudge so no dirt on the white part so if we put it to one here or to color two that means if you have factor of one it will be now changes here if we have a factor of zero you will get everything white so uh, black from this part here will mean that we use this value here so we darken that a bit because it's darker smudge and then we just connect the map range into the color here so oh sorry into the factor here so we get it in here and then we get all the darker smudge all over the place and we can decide if we want it to be really dark like that some gray tone or whatever but i think it should be a bit darker than the material is and we can of course can add some blue tone to it if you want to but that's uh, something that is up to you to do exactly as you want to and then if you want to fine tune it then you can just go in and change this multiply here so if you have a high value you get smudge all over the place and with a lower number you get less smudge and more and more just on the edges here. So we can have something like this perhaps. So uh, and if I can take it up just to see how I would like to do with the noise here, but I think it's rather okay right now. So have that to, I don't know, 0 0.4 or something. So something like this, that will look uh, good together with everything else. And then uh, perhaps we should do something about the roughness and so on as well. And uh, I would like to have more roughness where we have the smudge, but now uh, the smudge is black, so that will not change so much since black is zero. So we need to invert it. So I will add shift A, a color and an invert here. And I will also be able to control the strength. So I will add a multiply, shift A, converter and the math and a multiply. So we don't get too much away from the reflection. It's just a tiny bit of change here. So we can have a multiply here and we connect that to the output here uh, like that. 
And now when we have done that, we can now connect it with roughness by using an add. So I press shift A, convert the math, put in an add here and put in the result we get from this. So now we get a little less uh, ref uh, reflection on the smudge part or the dirt part here. Here we can start by adding clamp right now because now the value can be over one and we don't like that. So we put in clamp and then we can be sure that we have a good roughness here. We could also, if we want to, it's not necessary, nothing of these, these things are, oh, it's more that we could add some bump into this as well and that we can use just an add here as well. So we can take the add we have up here, pressing shift D, put it in here and then just add uh, the value that we get from, go closer here as we can see, from the map range here. So we drag a line from here down all the way to the add here. So I will do that, take it from up here and down here. And we will not notice that so much, but it will be a slight, slight change of the smudge anyway. And we can do a similar thing on the metal here. And to make it a bit easier for us, we can then uh, take and create a node group out of this. So I can do like this. And uh, now I have to remember that this part here we use for the roughness here. And the other part is to factor for the dirt. So, okay, now I've selected everything here. We can also use this uh, multiply inside. So we can take all of that part here and then we press Ctrl G. And as a group input here, I would like to have the multiply value there where we can add. So we have something, I don't know what we should call this, but uh, uh, dirt distribution perhaps. So then we control that by using the strength from the multiply here. And then we have this value for the multiply here, which will be controlling the roughness. So that could be uh, amount roughness. Uh, roughness like this. So then we have the distribution and amount roughness. And to make this uh, something that we can read, then the result could be uh, dirt factor like that. And the value out here could be then uh, ru roughness factor. So that will be roughness factor. So then we know that this is for the dirt and this is for the roughness from this dirt here. So now we can just press tab, go back and it's a little bit easier and we can just double check that this is about the dirt and this is about the roughness and that looks okay. And now we just name this node group so we call that dirt. Okay, so now we have everything here and now it's easy for us to just use this group into the metal as well. So we can select one of those metal things and then press shift A, go to group and here we would find the dirt as well and we can then put all these things in and we add it to the base color here by using color mix so shift a color and a mix rgb and then we take in a dirt factor on the factor here and we can now just use the color that we have on this part here and now we have to think a bit again because uh, the dirt factor it's a black on uh, on all the dirt parts. So this part here should be the dirt. We can put that to like something like this. 
since it's metallic we can get this brown thing that closely starting to rust or something and then this one could be the same as we have here and then we just connect those two so we get everything here and if I now get a bit closer to this here I can now see that this gets some brown from that part here so if I drag that down you get the dirt here and that means that we have connected uh, the color one and color two in the right way so I can take it up again yeah so we get some some very subtle tone of uh, changes here of the metallic like this and I think uh, when it comes to metallic we don't have to change anything when it comes to uh, bump or roughness and so on because it's okay uh, the surface will be the same I think so something something like this will work fine and you will hardly notice it on any other place it's mostly here no uh, roughness on the handle and so on or here so so it's here we can see it and uh, we can see it's darker up here it's darker here uh, can, can be that it's in here as well but we don't have to work with that uh, for the glass uh, even if you add dirt um, the, the dirt vertex paint will not be visible here so it's no use to put it in here so keep it as simple as possible so now we have the dirt in as well and uh, I can just do a render so we can see how it looks and I'll come back after that okay now my render is finished and we have dirt and dust on our lantern here and it looks rather good and uh, what we can see now is by combining in this way we then add the dirt first together with the metal or the color here and then we add the layer of dust after that and that means that we now combine both the brighter dust with the darker dirt here and get a combination here exactly as we get in the real world so so while we add things here all these things with the color and so on they will change but not randomly but using all the thoughts and ideas that we have since all these previous sessions on how to combine things to to make everything look real so now we have combined two things and we have a lot of things more to do but you can see now how they can work together to create something that in the end will look realistic so uh, i will end this session right now and then i continue in the next session with another layer that we put on our lantern.